Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leech Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another episode of the show. And um, so I've got two wines here from the Whitehall Lane Winery. And um, I bought these off of Woot quite a few months ago. Um, you got two bottles. I mean, look up the, um, the original page for that. You know, it's a wonderful thing. I can find the original page. So this was a two-pack and it was, oh, you don't have the price in here, but it was 94 Four ninety nine, so ninety five bucks for two bottles of wine. So you're figuring, okay, like forty seven dollars a bottle per bottle. Well, in looking up the original price on these things, maybe not the original price necessarily, but um, this particular bottle, this is the two thousand four Silver Anniversary uh, Cabernet Sauvignon Reserve. Uh, it sells right now for ninety three dollars, ninety two ninety nine, at least from the vineandtable.com uh, company. They only have six available right now. Now, what was originally sold, I don't know, but uh, so it may have sold for less at the time, but um, it's not an inexpensive bottle of wine. Um, and then uh, this bottle here, which is the 2005 um, Reserve. First of all, let's, let's, get, let's get a close-up of this one. So the Whitehall Lane Winery, 2004 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon Silver Anniversary Reserve, all right, boom. You can find it for 90 plus dollars online. And we'll get the, uh, we'll do that. This one is the 2005 Whitehall Lane Winery and Vineyards. So and this is the thing, like I found two different labels, so I don't know what the other one was all about. Uh, so Reserve, County of Sauvignon, Napa Valley. Uh, this one is, it says the regular price on Wine Piper is $69.99. They're out of stock. Their sale price was $59.99. So let's say for argument's sake, I have $150 worth of wine here. Now, we know that the, the show is really meant to be $20 and less type of wine, closer to like $10 range of wine. But explain why I bought this. So uh, in the sporting world, in the football, the football well, not football, not American football, but soccer. Uh, my team is the Tottenham Hotspur, which they play in White Hart Lane. So sometimes I see White Hall and I go, oh, what? Oh, wrong one. So it made me think of Tottenham. Uh, so I decided to buy it because I read on Woot how great it was, you know, how great the winery was. So I thought, okay, I'll buy it. And uh, I was, you know, buying for future episodes. And uh, it seemed like it was a pretty good deal, $100 for two bottles of wine that I would normally spend $150 bucks for. So um, I went ahead and bought it. So that's where the reasoning behind buying is. I normally wouldn't have bought wine that expensive just to review. But, uh, I mean, I have. We know that. But not as a normal course of things. So I've got that. Uh, the next wine is also another Woot wine. Um, but anyway, I, I digress. So we're about to taste that. First of all, real quick, I'm wearing this T-shirt for the past only like, three episodes, zipkid.com. So let me uh, give Vid Luther a little bit of a uh, little, little love here. This is the company that manages my website. So I have a WordPress website now. I don't have Squarespace anymore. Nothing wrong with Squarespace. It's just that what I want to do, future stuff I want to do with the website, I can't do with Squarespace's system. Um, so I went to a WordPress installation. Zipkid's local. Uh, I know Vid Luther, the owner. I've uh, hung out with him quite a few times, not trying to like name drop, but you know, he's, he's local in San Antonio. We've, I've, I've known him for a little while through uh, meetups and social media and hanging out. Um, and uh, when I was looking for WordPress hosting, uh, actually, I just kind of stumbled upon his site and um, uh, said, hey, I've got a local guy. Let's set it up. Now, the other thing about all this is that, yes, my site is actually hosted on Rackspace. So if you happen to... 
uh, check out the, the live streaming I did, well, in this case, a couple weeks ago, but um, it was on the 23rd, I think, 23rd of uh, August. I was doing a live stream. Uh, unfortunately, the interview, I, the radio interview I did, the internal radio station at Rackspace, uh, the Ustream, I Ustreamed it, and that was great, but for some reason it didn't record on Ustream. But um, speaking of that, is my recording? I should be recording this. Um, now that I thought about it. Yeah, it's recording, that's right. So, um, and the only thing that actually recorded was the actual banner hanging. So if you go to Ustream, you'll see it up there. So, um, uh, but yeah, Rackspace is uh, is the actual hosting uh company for my website and that's why I wanted to go with these local people because I know I know a lot of not a lot of rackers but I know a decent amount because they've, they've got a few thousand people that work there so it's not like I know a lot of them however I do know a lot of the zippy kid people because I've hung out with them in the past um, so um, I wanted to go local so if you're looking for WordPress hosting uh, definitely if you're looking for just hosting period go to Rackspace because uh, they're freaking reliable and they're fanatical about their uh, service. So, and then when you recognize great customer service, you want to you want to um, promote it. Anyway, so now let's get into the wine real quick because um, I gave myself ten minutes instead of my usual seven. So we're gonna try this one first. So again, the Whitehall Lane Winery, 2004 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon Silver Anniversary. Um, do they call it edition? No, reserve. Silver Anniversary Reserve. Um, so these two wines, again, I, I, I expect big things out of them because I, I've read good stuff about the winery itself. And we're going to talk about one other thing real quick. So the other thing that was really intriguing, another reason why I wanted to buy this, these wines, was this. This is a glass stopper. Got that? Glass stopper. Maybe you can tell. Um, so I can actually reseal it just like that. Um, it's not going to be like a vacuum in where I can, you know, vacuum out all the stuff. But it, all you have is the, the capsule that holds it down, basically. You do the capsule and you just twist it off. Now, it was a little bit harder, slightly harder, to uh, pull it off because it was actually sealed, sealed. But um, interesting, I was I wanted to check that out. This is called the, um, it's called a Vino Seal. Uh, it's made by a company called Alcoa. You might have heard of them out of Germany. Uh, it's the, the actual stopper's been around since 2003. And according to the Book of Knowledge, um, there are over 300 wineries that use it. Now, the downside of this is that it's pretty expensive. It's glass or plastic, it says here. Um, so it's pretty expensive to produce, and it has to be hand sealed. Apparently, they don't have equipment that can do it. The advantage, according to them, is that there's zero chance of um, well, let's see, using a glass stopper with an inert o-ring the vino seal creates a hermetic seal that prevents oxidation and tca contamination um so basically you're 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 not going to have any cork taint from from this stuff because it's glass now it doesn't mean that the seal could actually accidentally get broken for some reason I'm sure it could and the wine could actually just oxidize on its own as if there was a bad seal from regular cork, but um, not seen at any other winery that's done it. All right, so let's check it out. Okay, so already <laughs> there's a difference between a $90 bottle of wine and a $8 bottle of wine a lot of times. But um, the bouquet is just... I don't know, it's lovely. It's just nice. Um, it smells good. I, I get a bit of like that cherry pie type of thing. And it's not like really, really, um, it's not super um, big in the nose as far as like just in your face um, cherry pie. But he's got that. You know, a bit of cherry and cream um, type of thing going on. Maybe a little bit of strawberry. And not that I know the rhubarb tastes or smells like, for some reason that came to mind, but... Mm. 
Yeah, pretty much that. Let's go and check it out. That's what a Cabernet should do to your mouth. It should dry it out a bit. That's why the other Cabernet we did, I was like, really? It's pretty light. This is um, definitely not a light-bodied Cabernet. Yeah, this is going to be a little bit longer episode. Um, you still get that pie aspect, you know, cherry, strawberry maybe, um, with, a, with a touch of cream. Um, decent amount of acid. The finish is, is a pretty moderate finish. Um, the tannins are, are about medium tannin. But it doesn't like, it doesn't overwhelm you. It's, it's, it's subtle. Um, I think personally, I'd like a little bit more out of it, um, a little more oomph, but um, I mean, it should be fine. I mean, it's a 2004, so we're at seven years. It shouldn't be breaking down at this point yet. Um, I mean, not that, not that you know, it was a guarantee that, that it won't after seven years. Um, obviously, the stopper works. It's seven years old and nothing, nothing's bad happened to the wine. Um, and think about it, the stopper was only created in 2003. So, you know, the, it's, it's about as old of a wine as you're going to get with these glass stoppers. Uh, it's, it's good. It's really good. Um, I mean, you definitely need to pair this with some food. I mean, you could, I could, knowing me, I could drink this by itself and just kind of just salivate on it. Um, but uh, yeah, you definitely want to put this with some food. Um, the, 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 the usual fare of, of steaks. Um, but I could even see like a, a nice thick pork chop with it. Yeah, I can see like putting a pork chop with this one. Um, you know, any any variety of steaks would go well. Uh, my preference with steaks is is one that don't have, ones that don't have a lot of marbling. So I'm partial to center cut fillets and top sirloins, uh, that kind of stuff. Maybe strips, but um, you know, ribeyes and prime ribs, not exactly um, uh, my most favorite steaks. So prime rib I'll eat more just because the marbling is just it, it's not as bad when you're it's the same cut of steak, but with a uh, with ribeyes, it's just usually it's just too it's too fatty. Whereas the 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 way prime rib is made, it's not as bad. I usually prefer that. This is good wine. I could smell it for a while. So yeah, you got a hundred bucks to blow on some wine. And it's around, get it. I mean, if, it, if you can get, find it for like fifty or sixty dollars, for sure get it. Um, I'll give it a, I'll give it a, a 90, 92, 92.1. It's, it's well, no, ninety, ninety. The reason I drop it down a couple points is just that it's, it's, it's really good, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't blow me away yet. Like, I think if I decanted this a little bit, it might improve. Um, but I think it's well-balanced. I think it's well-made wine. Um, 90, yeah. I mean, that was only two points, so what? And who am, I to, who am I to say if it's a 90 or 92 or 80 compared to anybody else? But all that matters is what do you think about the wine? Definitely good. Let's move on. Let's, uh, let's get this one so we don't make this a half-hour episode. All right, the Whitehall Lane Winery and Vineyards. Reserve Cabernet Sauvignon 2005 Napa Valley. Um, again, I said you could find this, well, like one website. You could, you could have found it if you could have bought it still for $60. Bucks. Uh, originally priced $70. I'm 
Well, also has the glass or the vino seal. Let's uh, get that closer to there. There you go. Now, something about the winery. Uh, the winery itself was founded in 1979. Um, and then it was sold um, to two brothers. Um, sorry, two brothers started the winery in 1979. Then the uh, Lear, uh, the uh, Liardini, uh, Le uh, Leonard, Leonardini, the Leonardini family. You know, for an Italian, you think I wouldn't stumble on Italian words as much. But uh, anyway, they bought it in 1993, uh, and then they kind of, you know, they invested money and they made it a better winery. So um, it's named after a, the, the road, White um, Whitehall Lane, uh, it's on the property, or south of the property, it's south of the property. Uh, named it... Whatever, it, it, there's, there's a street there. It's called White Hall Lane. That's why they named it that way. Uh, it runs along the south part of the property. See, I knew it was on the south part. All right, so this nose is not as open. And it's not very fruit forward. It's more mineral. It's more of a mineral type of thing. I'm getting red wine on my forehead there. I would say it's a pretty closed, pretty closed nose. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I kind of, kind of is chemical like, not mineral. And it makes me concerned because I know that one of these corks came off really easily, and I don't, it's been a few hours. I don't remember which wine it was the, it, came, it felt like it was, it looked like it already kind of, the seal was broken. But I didn't know if that was because it, it, it did it. Once I took the the foil off because the it, it was flat when I was opening it, and once I took the foil off, it was kind of like at an angle. I'm getting a little bit more fruit. It's opening up just slightly more. Again, that raspberry cherry stuff. So hopefully it's it's okay. Yeah, it's 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 doing a little better. Let's taste it right now. Again, um, I'm going to call it a medium body wine. It's got decent tannins to it. But it's got more of a cherry than raspberry flavor to it. Um, the finish is a little bit, you know, it is a decent finish. Um, and it's it's more like a mid to late or, or, or end of the palate, um, back of the palate type of thing where I'm not really getting it up front. And you know it's slightly more vegetal now. So instead of being a fruit forward, I mean, instead of being a fruity wine, I'm getting just just general hints of peppers, um, green pepper type of stuff, greenness. Um, but it really feels like it, it's it's very closed still. Um, this could be a wine that definitely uh, I would say probably needs to stay uh, or, or gets decanted. Um, I don't think it needs to age anymore. I mean, the tannins are, are, are pretty good. They're not overwhelming, uh, but they're not very, very light. They're, they're about the same, um, medium tannin. But it's, it feels like there's potential in the wine, but it's, it's, it's just not there yet. And it's not, see now, now on, the, on, the, on the nose, it's really starting to open up some more. This is the wine that needs to be, this wine needs to be decanted, whereas that one, you can kind of pop and pour, and it'll open up a lot faster. And yeah, it's starting to open up some more. That's what, that's one of the wonderful things about wine. You know, what one of the things about wine, and why is it the only thing that does this, but having that over time, 
Again, these bottles have been open for a while. And this is a perfect example that just if you open the bottle, it's not going to necessarily breathe that much. I mean, I initially was not getting much out of it. Once you get into the glass and you've got more surface area, I know I preach and harp on that all the time. I don't know why I'm trying to spin the little drop of wine in there. But um, I think it's a wine that needs to open up a little more. I'm also going to give it a 90, more about its potential. Hmm, Nobel Prizes are done that way too, aren't they? Um, more about the potential of the wine and, and not be, that's kind of one of those, you know, how some reviewers will like, they'll taste the wine. Maybe it's not like, you know, drinkable yet, you know, when they first do barrel tastings, but they're, they're looking at the wine, I guess, in that structure type of thing and kind of making that best guess as to how uh, the wine will be. And they, they hope they're right. And then taste it again a few years later. And if they gave it like a 90 or 95, it stays that way. I'm going to get and give it a 90. I mean, I actually prefer this wine more. I know it's only a year older, but I have a feeling that this wine might actually be the better wine for me if I decanted it. I don't know, just because I'm getting the more of the vegetal stuff, I think that's why. I mean, it really, it, it's it's opening up some more. But I'm still going to give it a 90, just kind of like the hedge my bets. All right, so um, that's going to do it for today. If uh, you can find either one of these wines and you've got some scratch to spend on it, buy it. I definitely would recommend these wines to, to anyone that's that's really into wine. Uh, your, your novice, your, 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 your wine drinker that doesn't drink a lot of wine, you're gonna drink these and go, well, I could have bought something for 20 bucks, it's just as good. So um, it's kind of like my attitude about like people that you know sit there, well, I want a Cristal. I'm like, really? One, there's, I mean, there's plenty of other, you know, champagnes out there. They're going to be just as good for the same price or better. Um, but, you know, you're going to sit there and you're not a very experienced wine drinker. You're drinking the best of the best of the best just because somebody told you it's great or it was in a song somewhere. But yet you're not really, you're not going to fully appreciate why it's that good. You know, because you can get another champagne or another bottle of wine that's half the price or even less than that. And you're still going to get the same enjoyment. Anyway, um, I'm going to do it for now. That was my little rant. And uh, as always, if you don't watch, if you're not watching on the website, stop by, click the links, friend me up, uh, tell your friends about it, say hi to Zippy Kid, uh, and uh, if you have a WordPress blog, and switch over to them. And that's going to do it. We'll see everybody again next time.